Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so in today's video, I'm gonna be doing the interior on the Audi A1. So last week, you had the video, the reveal video on this car. Sunday was the final episode on the Volkswagen Up. That one's now finished and gone to its new owner. So let me just switch the camera so around. So I've got a complete airbag kit for this Audi A1. As you can see, I've got curtain airbags. I've got an SRS module, steering wheel airbag, two seat belts. Well, I actually got four. I got the rears as well, but the rears don't have um, the tensioner that deploys. So there was no point really sending them with it, but I can't complain. Uh, I've got the dashboard. So curtain airbags, I'll either keep for a future project or sell them on, same as the SRS module, as on the Audis, you can reset them to factory settings. So what I'm gonna be starting with first, I will be taking the center console out, all the little bits like the radio, the heater controls, steering wheel airbag and steering wheel, and then the glove box. And then we can get the dash out. If the lighting's not the best, I do apologize, to be honest. To, to be honest, this is the first time I'm filming doing a dashboard kit on my own. Normally I'll have someone else filming while I'm doing the work, etc. So really, it would be better for me to have like a head mount with a GoPro, which I do have a GoPro. I have invested into the channel. I bought a MacBook Pro, um, Apple Final Cut for the editing, bought a camera. I think that was a Sony A6400, if, if I remember rightly, uh, external hard drive. The reason I've not started using this stuff yet, I've turned the stuff on. It's just daunting. I don't know how to use any of this stuff. Doing the cars, this is not new to me, but editing, uh, filming, that is what's new. Uh, so it's a bit, I feel like I'm winging it at the minute, but to be honest, I feel like I'm doing quite well on filming on my phone and using iMovie. Let us, let us know what you think. Am I doing all right or not? Um, but I am very limited with tools on the editing. So that's why I just wanted to, you know, invest into the channel. I've got all the bits. I just need a minute to, you know, learn how to use it. Probably watch some YouTube tutorial videos it's like that old saying he's got all the gear but no idea <laughs> that is me at the minute uh, but yeah let's get on to doing this car enough of the waffle so what i'm going to start first i'll start with the center console so with the center console there's a rubber inlay just here literally lift that rubber inlay it then exposes a t20 torque screw there's you lift this plastic cover up here i'm really struggling with the light here but there is some torque screws just here and a couple more at the beginning. But when I do get it off, I'll show you if this helps one of you guys need to do a job on one of these, you know, what I'm doing now. I hope this video helps. So I don't know if I've told you guys already, I've not rebuilt an Audi A1 before. So I just quickly bought a workshop manual off easymanuals.co.uk. It's a genuine Audi workshop manual. Just had a quick look at the arm, uh, not the armrest, the center console. So there's seven Torx T20 screws that holds the center console in. And as I said, remove that rubber mat, that's one screw just there. Remove the plastic cover where underneath the handbrake, that's another screw. The gear gator, uh, get a pry tool in the edge. You need to squeeze th this side in, and then all of this you can then squeeze and lift out. Once you lift that out, there's two screws that are hidden, this one and this one. Then the cup holder, literally that will just pull out and then that's the remaining three screws. So one here, one here, and one in the front. What the workshop manual states then, you need to lift the handbrake up as high as you can. From the back, lift it right the way up, and then this will pull towards you. You just gotta remember, just be careful as the cigarette light is still plugged in. So that's the center console now removed. Reason you have to take the center console out it's just so you can get to the lower screws on the um, dashboard, as you can see. So hopefully with the radio, it bees nice to me. Basically, I've only bought one radio key with me, so hopefully this works. So I'll start with this one. Right, that one's released. I've got to be gentle, not press too hard, because it'll just lock the key in. Yep, that's released it. Ah, I got lucky. Then just got to disconnect all these wires. It's nothing to be worried about when you see all these wires. You're like, oh, blimey. They're basically, you've got the quad lock here, the main one. 
you've got this double one just here and then all the rest are all color coded so you can't fit this wrong so yes you, there's loads of wires here but don't be worried if you're going to do this job yourself the glove box now removed there's two plugs one for the harness for the actual glove box itself which is the light etc uh, you've got the MMI port which has a cover from inside the glove box you just take that off and then this will come out from behind also you've got three screws at the top which are T20 Torx uh, you've got two screws to the back <laughs> screws <laughs> two screws to the back of the glove box and then you take the side trim off the end here and there'll be, bear me a second, there'll be a screw just through here. That's all the screws. Then this um, glove box will drop out. I have just taken off an A-post trim off camera. Uh, so if you remember the A3, I, had, I did the uh, headliner on that. Where the airbag logo was, this clip actually come out. On this one, it's not. So this is just three metal spring clips. So get a plastic pry tool, uh, wedge it in, and just slowly, gently prise away at it, and all three clips will uh, come undone. Just be careful that there is a speaker at the bottom corner that obviously you need to unplug. So I'm slowly getting all the little bits now removed so we can get the dashboard off. Uh, next job is to take the steering wheel and the airbag off. But the first thing I need to take off is the upper and lower cowling. Uh, that's just held in yet again. One Torx T20. Uh, just at the bottom, the top part of the casing literally just clips off. And same with this uh, cover that goes at the bottom of the speedo. Literally, that just uh, pulls towards you. Then the rubber gator, rubber gator, lever gator, is just held on with some little clips as well. If you can see just here. All I've done, pry tool again, just gone on the edges. And as you can see, it's now loose which means you remove the upper one first and then you can turn the steering wheel half all the way around. I'll show you, uh, let me just do it and I'll show you because it's going to be hard me just holding the camera and doing it at the same time. Try and do at least one corner of the airbag on camera. So a little pick. Let me a second. I haven't got the mic plugged in. I'm just going to show you on camera. So I've got a pick here on the back of the airbag. If you see that this metal spring, so bear me a second, I've pushed it down. Now that's one corner released. Turn the steering wheel the opposite direction. And then do the same. Feel like a dentist here. Just like that. One airbag out. So here's a nice clear view what I was doing behind the steering wheel with the pick. So literally that metal spring clip, putting a pick or if you can get a small screwdriver in there, pressing down on that, that then releases where it clips in just here. Turn the steering wheel halfway round so you can get to this one. As like you know the lower casing is still on, it's just the upper one that you removed. Turn the steering wheel all the way round to do that one. Uh, then literally it just pops out. One thing I am quite lucky this, uh, to the plug for the airbag, it has melted. It did melt onto the airbag itself, which I have seen, a fair, it's happened to me a couple of times on cars, uh, so you have to change the harness. Luckily, the airbag, the new one I've bought, literally it comes with everything, even the harness, so that's one less thing I need to wait on, so just thought I'd show you guys this. So the bolt for the steering wheel is an M12 multi-spline. Uh, when you do take the steering wheel off, and when you do refit the steering wheel, there is, you can't get it wrong, because literally on the steering wheel you've got that little scratch, and same on the steering column there's a scratch as well, but one thing I recommend when you, um, just trying to do this one handed, bear me a second, just give it a little shake, put some tape on this squib so it doesn't move about, because they can break, if you say if you start spinning it around, 
it can break inside. So yeah, just put a little bit of electrical tape just to stop that, preventing that from happening. So that's all taped up. The closest tape next to me was uh, some blue masking tape. Uh, so yeah, now the steering wheel's off, squib's all taped up so it can't move. I can now get to the um, lower cowling two screws. That's the remaining two screws that's holding this on. Obviously you had the one underneath, what I undone first. Uh, top bit was just clipped on. So I'm gonna undo these two now, remove that off camera, and then we'll get on to the Speedo, which is same again, two Torx T20. And from other VAG cars I've done, I guess this will tilt this way and then pull out. So that lower piece is now removed, but these two screws just here, uh, from all the screws I've already removed, these two have been different to the rest, so I'm just gonna loosely screw these in. So both Torx T20 screws are now removed at the bottom of the Speedo cluster. You pull it towards you and then you can tilt it towards the passenger side. Press down on the purple tab on the blue wiring plug. It goes upwards and then that will just disconnect. Remove the speedo. That just exposes um, a screw just here, which is the actual dashboard to the uh, metal frame, which is obviously behind the dash. So a couple of minutes ago, I was just explaining to you that um, I'm quite lucky that the replacement airbag has come with a wiring harness. Well, that luckiness has gone. <laughs> so I bought this dashboard kit literally two months ago. The day I won the car at auction at Copart, obviously I had to wait a couple of days for my recovery guy to go pick it up. But yeah, the day I actually won the car, I actually purchased a dashboard kit on eBay. Um, obviously, like you see, it was a full complete kit. So there was me all happy, yeah, about this harness that's come with the airbag. Well, basically, this one here is the original one that's blown. If you can see, these are two securing parts that holds the airbag on, these little ball pin with the springs. Can you see this airbag? It's got four white, what, these white things. It's a totally different airbag. So an Audi A1 is, well, this particular A1, is an 8x platform so that's the chassis code uh, so majority of the parts for this car will start with like 8x and then whatever number for that particular part as you know i've just rebuilt an audi a3 which i give my missus and that car was an 8v 8a3 which obviously you can get rs3 s3 8v this is an a3 s3 or rs3 steer um, airbag and it's been two months, so there's no chance I'm going to be able to return it, etc. Um, so, if anyone wants one of these airbags with this code, let me know. It will be for sale. Worst case, I'll have to put it on eBay. So, I'm going to have to um, buy an airbag, unfortunately. So, it won't get finished today, like I said. It will, apart from the steering wheel airbag. Well, I better not jinx it now. Let's see what happens. So, let's carry on with the dashboard. So what's left to do to get this dashboard out? So I've just removed, obviously, like you see, the steering wheel and the speedo. What's left is the headlight switch needs to come out. Uh, this lower trim here, there's no screws on this one. This one just unclips all the way around. Uh, the heat controls needs to come off. And the speaker cover, which literally you just get a pry tool, lift this up, and there is a screw in the middle of this. Uh, also, I've got to get this screen out. And then we can start actually taking the dashboard screws off and hopefully it will come out fine. Once you've pulled this trim trim off, uh, you've just got two things to unplug. is the OBD port and the uh, footwell light. So what I'm going to show you quickly, I'll try my best to anyway, uh, how to remove the screen. So like we know, this screen goes up and down manually. It's not an automatic screen like some of the Audis. And as you can see, this part just here is flush to the dashboard. So I guess you're wondering, how do you remove it? You don't just yank it. There is no screws. If you can just see here where I've got this pry, um, plastic pry tool just rests underneath so this end don't go clip in, basically. There's a metal spring clip. So what you want to do, I don't know if you're going to see, basically up in the top right hand corner, that is the metal spring clip there. You just need to push something onto it, literally, to, just to squeeze it in, and you'll see it just starting to lift. Then you can get like a pry tool and just slowly work your way up. 
around it. I've literally just done it off camera. I probably could have done it on camera. Yeah, so all you're doing, you're getting something straight up in the top of this area and this area, just here in the vents, basically, just on this bit. So once you've got something on it, you can literally push forward on it and then that will spring, that'll push that spring clip in and then it releases it. So that screen's now ready to unplug to remove. I think we're pretty much now ready, apart from the heat controls, this dashboard's about to come out. Screen's out, speaker grill, just literally plastic pry tool, work your way around, that'll come off. And then that will then, there should be a screw in here, give me a second. Yeah, right in, just there. So that's the old dashboard now fully removed. To be honest, it's not a too bad job. There is one awkward bolt uh, underneath the airbag on the dashboard. I think it was this one towards the top. Uh, you ain't got a lot of space. But apart from that, wasn't a bad job at all. All the wires, they all, they all are together. So obviously these two are for the airbag, the earth, and the, obviously the main wire that plugs into the airbag. That's like, you know, the for the glove box. That one goes into the glove box. And all the radio ones are together. And just the one speedo and towards the right is for the um, headlight switch. Apart from that, it might look scary behind the dashboard, but honestly, it's not too bad at all. So that's the replacement dashboard now fully fitted on the Audi A1. All the bolts are now holding it in. It's just the last little bits I need to fit, like the, um, the radio, the centre vents, the steering wheel, the lower trim, and obviously the glove box. So I'm just going to assemble the rest of the dashboard on time lapse and then after that we'll get on to the seat belt. So now on to the front seat belt. So the first thing I've done, I've already started dismantling the passenger side, but I just wanted to show you guys. So the first thing you need to do is remove this trim, which is held on by these metal spring clips. So let's just get a plastic pry tool and just pry it up and these clips will come off. So as you can see, this is the passenger side, all the metal clips still in place. So literally that just lifts up. So then you can get the side trim removed as this is a three door car so once i removed that side trim the next thing i did was just re remove the rear bent seat as i need to gain access for this side trim so it can come out as this car is a three door uh, so obviously i've already started doing the passenger side i just wanted to show you guys it's just easier just to explain so yeah lift up the rear bent seat some vag cars have a one-time use clip uh, but this one does have a fixed mounting bracket either side so that'll just lift up and then the side trim, let me just get in. The side trim is just held on by clips. There's no screws or anything like that. So they are one-time use clips. That's one thing I haven't got on me now, but I'll get the seat belts in and I can do that off camera. It's these clips just here. Uh, there's a couple more and two more that's actually still on the, uh, the side trim. As some clips along this top that's bit one as well. Thing, if you are doing a three door A1, you do have one tweeter speaker that you just need to be careful when removing that trim. So now onto the seat belts. So once you've removed that interior sill trim and then the rear quarter panel for the interior, you can then remove this piece just here that covers the bolt for the upper seat belt bolt. Uh, normal cars, this normally just pulls down, 
but on this one there is two t25 torque screws one just here and one just there so once you've got them removed this will just pull downwards and then you gain access to that bolt uh, so there's three bolts on this seat belt they are m10 multi-spline so one just here one just here for the buckle and obviously one hidden behind so just this. a quick bit of information as this is safety i'm about to talk about uh, so when the airbags get deployed on these crash damaged cars and the seat belt tensions go off car manufacturers state you need to replace the bolts that hold the, those parts on like the seat belt bolts uh, the bolt for the steering wheel because that is a one-time use anyway even if an airbag didn't get deployed if you remove that bolt it's a one-time use so i've got new bolts for the, all these parts and if you're doing this job yourself on an audi a1 the torque specs for the steering wheel bolt is 30 newton meters and 90 degrees and the seat belt bolts are 45 newton meters without any degrees just thought i'd let you guys know if you're doing this job yourself this might help you out so before i remove all the bolts that hold the seat belt on and this uh, trim just here i will undo the plug for the igniter for the seat belt so these little plugs are on all the airbags on this vehicle for example if, even if it's the headliner airbags or the dashboard so i always state on all the other videos i've done on the youtube channel uh, with seat belts and airbags you need to be very careful with that orange plug just here because these plugs are very easy to break so either use a little pick or a tiny little screwdriver on this one i'm going to work my way from the top just put it in behind and that will pull towards you want it don't have to come all the way out that's enough and then this yellow plug will just pull off there is a little bit of tolerance on it but it will pull towards you but yeah you just need to be very careful because these are very easy to break so once you've removed those t25 torque screws um, you then pull that down this will come off obviously it's still wrapped around the seat belt at the minute but that just exposes that this m10 multi-spline upper bolt so you've got this bolt here the bolt for the actual seat belt mechanism to the body and the bolt for the buckle so there's three bolts in total they're all three of them are m10 multi-spline so i'm going to get that removed now and swapped over so the old seat belt is now removed if you can see there's a locating hole just here that is for this part of the seat belt so literally you put the bear me a second that's now located as you can see the hole now matches for the bolt i'm going to uh, get all the bolts in and then i'll torque it up to 45 newton meters for next time when i do an airbag kit i'll make sure i will get a head mount for the gopro I need to start using all this equipment I've bought. So all the bolts are now, all the new bolts are now in. They're all torqued up to 45 newton meters. That's one, bear me a second. Two. Three. So that's all three bolts in. Now just this piece needs to go on with the bolts obviously. So literally that would just give me a second. And then put the two torque screws bolts in. And then I've got to repeat on the opposite. So everything is now back together. So it's now time to check that everything works just before I plug diagnostics in to see if the fault codes will clear. So I'll just put the ignition on, check if the light switch works as it does. They're just out, uh, we'll passenger airbag on, and it'll probably say, yeah, that's for the front passenger headlight. Obviously that's smashed. So now time to check if everything works. All right, screen works. Buttons are working, check radio. But you hear. Yep, that's working. Heater controls. All good. Uh, traction control button. Is working. Turn that heater off. Sorry. If I click car, press the drive slip button, and that just goes through the options, or you can use that knob. Hazard button is working. Stop start. What else we got? Glove box light. I think that's about it. Obviously, like you know, the steam wire bag 
that's the last thing to do. But as you know, I got given the wrong one with the airbag kit. So I need to buy a correct one with the harness as well because the original airbag harness was melted onto the blown airbag. So now all these bits I know are working, it's time to plug the diagnostics in. So I'll click Audi. All I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna, um, obviously I can do a full health report, so that's a full system scan on every module on the car, but I just wanna go onto the airbags. So I'll just let this connect. Now connected, so I'll do system selection. And if I go to airbags, Read default codes. And now see what clears. Just one fault code left, which is the airbag uh, for the steering wheel. Resistance too high, it's, it's unplugged, it's not even in there, so. So that's really good news, so all the seat belts, well when I say all the front seat belts, obviously the passenger airbag on the blown dashboard, that's all now being replaced, and as you can see the only fault code I have is for the steering wheel airbag that is not there, so once I get one, we'll then literally it'll take two seconds to fit it, just plug the harness in, and it literally just so with the fault code for the power steering, I think that's what P one six nine zero zero. So obviously at the minute, this car, if it was running, it wouldn't have power steering because it's being turned off because of the airbags deployed. I would normally do that in today's video with doing all the airbags etc. But as we know, this car is not currently running due to the broken wires. So I will not do that fault code until I fix those broken wires. It might allow me to do it now, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'll do that fault code when I repair the wires so we can get the car running first, and then I'll do the fault code. So if some of you guys want needed to know how to do that, don't worry, I'll show you. I managed to do the driver's side without breaking any of the interior trim clips. They are literally it's hit or miss if they're gonna break or not. They are classed as a one-time use item. So if you don't break any, you, you've got lucky. Uh, so driver's side one, I didn't break any. Obviously this side, there was two or three. So if, if there's four or five that holds it on, I'll just buy five clips. They're like 60p each, they're not much. But yeah, that is the interior now, I can't say now finished, 98%. <laughs> For you, like you know, just a steel wear bag and four or five plastic clips. It's going to be an end for today's video. I was so close to getting that interior fully finished just because of a wrong steel wear bag. It was pretty annoying, I will be honest. But these things happen. So I'll order the correct one. And then I've got a 8V Audi A3 RS3 S3 8V airbag to sell. So I'll put it on eBay if you need it. Uh, let me know on either on Instagram, Nathan underscore Hiley or my email address, Nathan underscore highly at outlook.com. But yeah, I appreciate you guys for watching. So if you did like today's video, smash that like button as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm. The channel is now slowly growing. We're nearly 5,000 subscribers now, which I appreciate all of you who, who are subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get a notification when I do a new upload. So next week, I will be filming stripping down the exterior on this as we need to see what other damage the car's got so i can get all these parts ordered because i'm going on holiday literally in pr just under two weeks so i want to get all the bits ordered this strip down and then the body shop can sort out that top lid of the chassis leg get all the brand new genuine panels painted but yeah i appreciate you guys for watching and i'll see you next week with a new video